Hi everyone, Nick Russo here, and welcome back to the BGP multi-homing series. An alternative to the shadow session design is to use a shadow route reflector. Rather than creating a second iBGP session to an existing route reflector, let's just add a second route reflector entirely. This increases availability by protecting against a route reflector device failure. The original route reflector, which is R7, will continue to select a best path based on its view of the topology, then advertise those best paths to other iBGP speakers. The shadow route reflector, which is R8, will run best path normally, but advertise the second best path instead. Here's how it works. R6 advertises its IPv4 and IPv6 routes to R4 and R5 over eBGP as usual. R4 and R5 prefer the eBGP route from R6 over the iBGP routes from each other to reach R6's loopbacks, since no policies are applied. Both of these PEs advertise their best paths to R7 and R8, the route reflectors. Each route reflector will run best path independently and should come to the same conclusion that R4 is the best path, regardless of where they are placed in the network relative to the egress PEs. I'll show you how to guarantee this in the demo. R7 will only advertise its best path to R3 per the standard IBGP rules, while R8 will only advertise the diverse path. The same logic used on a shadow session is applied to the shadow route reflector to enable this special advertisement. This ensures that the P and PE devices receive two different paths towards R6 for multipathing purposes. Before we jump into the demo, you should know about my Cisco Advanced Routing courses at Pluralsight. Rather than teach various topics in isolation, I developed unique, large-scale topologies to illustrate how the technologies interact. If you need to brush up on your routing protocols, tunneling techniques, or management services, click the link in the video description to get started. Now, on to the demo. Starting on R3, let's quickly review the BGP configuration. Unlike the shadow session, we don't need to create new loopbacks or advertise new routes into is to is on our existing devices. Instead, our P and PE routers will connect to a new route reflector, which is R8, using the same session parameters that they use to connect to R7. R3 has four total sessions, two for IPv4 and two for IPv6, each of which targets a different route reflector. Then, under each address family, we activate the proper route reflector neighbors and enable iBGP multipath. Let's quickly check that the IPv4 BGP sessions have been established. R3 receives two prefixes from R7 and R8, which are the R1 and R6 loopback test prefixes we've seen throughout the series. Before moving on, we'll check the IPv6 BGP sessions as well. Likewise, R3 receives two prefixes from each route reflector for the IPv6 loopbacks originated by R1 and R6. We'll head to R8 to review its configuration next. R7 and R8 have nearly identical configurations. They peer with the route reflector clients R2 through R5 within AS65000 sourced from loopback 0. Each route reflector has eight total peers, four for each address family. You might remember the advertise diverse path backup command from the previous video on shadow sessions. We'll use the same command under the v4v6 policy template so that R8 always advertises a second best path to all peers. In this way, we allow R7 to advertise the best path and R8 to advertise the second best path. This raises an interesting question. How can we guarantee that R7 and R8 choose the same best path? If R7 and R8 choose different best paths, then R8's second best might be equal to R7's first best, canceling out the fancy configuration we just reviewed. To help guarantee both route reflectors choose the same best path, we can tell BGP to skip the IGP metric in the best path calculation. This effectively allows BGP to ignore the placement of route reflectors in the network. If one route reflector is closer to R4 and one is closer to R5, that no longer matters. Both devices are guaranteed to select R4 as the best path given its lower router ID, assuming no other attributes are changed. 
In our particular design, both route reflectors are equidistant from both PEs, so this command is technically unnecessary today. I still recommend it as a best practice for all shadow route reflector implementations. We also include our standard backup path selection and installation commands, as well as disabling BGP host recursion. We've discussed all these commands before. Let's look up R6's IPv6 route in the BGP table to begin our verification. The path via R4 is best, while the path via R5 is the backup. Notice this next hop metric of 20 is completely ignored due to the command we configured earlier. We configured R8 to advertise the diverse backup path, so we'll use the advertise routes command to ensure this works. As expected, R8 advertises the backup path to R6's loopback via R5 rather than the best path via R4. You can trust me that R7 is advertising the best path via R4, which is standard BGP behavior. Let's head to R3 to verify it received both routes. Just like with a shadow session, we see both routes received and installed for multipath operations. This time, we have two route reflectors, R7 and R8, rather than two IBGP sessions to the same route reflector. What makes these shadow designs useful is that there aren't any BGP protocol extensions required to make it work.